their league and that is matters uh, to do with the Kenyan Premier League. It has not been the merry season for them. But they are confident now. Matano actually, after that victory, said that it is a redemption song that they will be singing because they are confident that after bugging the Go TV Shield uh, finals, they will have a very, very beautiful uh, season come next year. But it is just a matter of time to wait and see if at all the big lounge are going to wake up from that sleep in matters to do with the Kenyan Premier League. But when you talk about Matano being a tactician, the players also are able to say that they're very confident that they have a leader who is sort of their father and with that they can play and they will make sure that they play for him and be able to win the different uh, tournaments that they will be taking part come next season. Now let's talk about uh, Sofa Parker on the other side. They have one instrumental player that is Omar Kasumba and when we talk about Omar Kasumba he's been able to play only uh, 12 outings uh, for uh, uh, Sofa Parker and when you talk about a player who's uh, played 12 matches for his side Nobody will expect that that player is the one who is the current uh, top scorer for uh, Sofa Parker because he has uh, scored 11 goals out of the 12 matches that he has played. He is not a Kenyan, but for him, he's saying that I want to change my nationalities if I can and be able to play for Harambe Stars. Listen in. Since signing for Batoto Bamungu in the second leg of the season from Uganda's SC Villa, Omar Kasumba has been on a scintillating form for the 2009 Kenya Premier League champion Sofapaka. Kasumba opened his KPL account in Sofapaka's 3-2 win over Moroni Youth and he hasn't looked back since then. The striker has since netted 11 times in 12 appearances for Sofapaka while providing 5 assists. The Ugandan who is yet to be capped by the Prince is elevating for a chance to play for Arambe Stars. When, if I get an opportunity... I am willing to do anything because I didn't play for Uganda national team. I played only for Anders. Kasumba, who has won his club player of the month twice since joining Sofa Parker, also feels is well placed to win the golden boot at the end of the season. But the Kenyan league is not easy. It's more competitive than Uganda. I will continue working hard. I expect m more goods. More and more. Omar Kasumba's coach and fellow Ugandan Sam Simbwa collected the Coach of the Month award, beating Gormaya's Dylan Kerr to the gong. Sofapaka won three of their matches in the month of August, drawing only once against Sposta Rangers. It's a good sign. I've got this. I've got this before in Uganda, even in Rwanda, and I'm now getting them in Kenya. Then it means that I. Uh, Maybe I'm good. The tactician feels that despite Gormaya having a big lead at the top of the league, his team still has a slight mathematical chance of winning the league. There is a slim mathematical chance of clinking the title, but uh, to be sincere, Gormaya has got uh, an upper hand. Come on, I'm a player. You are Rajia, maybe it was a Shinda league, but so far, we can get log. I don't give up, but we are still chasing for the, for the cup. Batoto Bamungu's next assignment will be against Suzuki Richo. Robinson Okenye, KTN Sports. Thank you very much, Robinson Okenye, for that. Now, when we talk about the Golden Boot race in matters with the Kenyan Premier League, we're talking about Umar Kasumba, and for him, he's been able to get those 11 goals out of the 12 matches that he has uh, played. Uh, but uh, you know... The battle for that actually gong, and that is the golden boot this time out. The winner always gets 100,000 at the end of the season, and no player will want to miss that money. Talk about the eight players that are on the lead. Jack is Twisange, Kefa Swani. We also have Masud Juma. He's uh, been impressive. Omar Kasumba, we're talking about him and Sofapaka, and how impressive he's been uh, since he signed for Sofapaka. At the same time, Stephen Waruru, we remember he was uh, leading uh, for a number of times, but uh, for him, he, he is now shooting blanks. He is expected maybe uh, to get some goals against uh, Gormaya today, but remember that won't be an easy battle. We also have the likes of uh, Christine Odor, Ezekiel uh, Okari, who are just separated by a mere four goals within the first, actually, seven, having a difference of only two goals. So it, it will be a very, very tight battle because all these players, they want to get those goals. Kwefa Kefa Swani currently is on the lead, but also for him, not an easy battle because he wants to score, but will he really score? Just a matter of time, and we wait to see who will be able to be the star man in the Kenyan Premier League top goal scorers. Now we talk about today's action. We'll be having different uh, games. Uh, different results are expected to come in. But very, very crucial, the one match that is expected to be the rib uh, cracker of all is the top of the, uh, of, of the table battle, and that is uh, Gormaya, which 
side is going to be playing against Ulinzi Stars. We're talking about uh, Gormai and Ulinzi Stars. The two sides have a very, very uh, positive uh, uh, history. But for Gormai, they will be away today. But for them, they only need one single point. And when they get that single point, they will be able to be crowned the champions of the Kenyan uh, Premier League. We talk about, we know we had uh, other matches that have been postponed because of the Go TV uh, final that we had yesterday. Karibangi Sharks was uh, supposed to pl play with Nakubat, but they played in the uh, third uh, place. We also have the likes of Moroni Youth uh, against FC Leopards. They were supposed to play, but that match also has been postponed. Zoya Sugar also was, uh, was scheduled to play today against Kakamega Homeboys, but also that match has been rescheduled. But we talk about uh, Nzoye Sugar on the other side, as a side that will be playing against Tasker. Tasker, remember, they have suspended their uh, head coach. Uh, the Brewers themselves are saying we might have been drunk this uh, season because the results have not been coming our way, but they want to go out there and be able to secure maximum points. But this time round, it will be against Nzoya Sugar. Now we talk about this uh, Kenyan Premier League and uh, the teams that are leading. We are talking about Gormaya and how impressive Gormaya has been this season. But when we talk about how impressive they have been, we will just uh, take a look at that standing because they have been able to rack in points. Currently, Gormaya are on the summit of the Kenyan Premier League. They have a total of uh, 63 points. Talk about them having 63 points. They have been able to play uh, 29 matches. They have won impressive 19 matches this time out, drawn only six and lost only four. So yes, they are a side that they are supposed to be on that summit of the log. We talk about uh, position two on the other side. So Vipaka are currently chasing, but their chase is not an easy one because when you look at those points, the difference mathematically, if Gurmaya get one point, uh, Sofapaka will be out of that uh, fry. Kakamega Homeboy is another side that has been very, very impressive. Uh, they have been impressive this time out, but you never know uh, how uh, the different results are going to rack in in today's action. Now, when we look at uh, the bottom half, or the bottom side of the log, we have been uh, seeing other teams uh, struggling. The struggling teams, uh, those results are not uh, that impressive for them. But on the bottom of the log is uh, Muhoroni Youth on uh, the uh, 18th position. Muhoroni Youth have been able uh, to uh, only have five wins. They are on the bottom with uh, 25 points. So uh, the also fight for relegation looks like will go down the wire because we have the likes of Thika United on the position 16. We have uh, a Western uh, Steam on position 17. They, are, uh, they only have a difference of uh, around three points. So it is also a grueling battle down there because these teams don't want to get the chop. But if they don't want to get the chop, they need to have positive results in the ties that have remained. And of, and of course, when you talk about the relegation scare between these teams, the likes of Western Steamer, the likes of Moroni, and also the likes of uh, Thika United that have been uh, struggling down there, we will also have to take a look at what is happening in the National Super League. Because when you talk about the National Super League, it is all about, I want to be on the Kenyan Premier League in the coming season. And when we talk about wanting to be on the Kenyan Premier League, we have the likes of um, the KCB. Remember, KCB actually uh, got the chop and they dropped in a 2015 season. If uh, my memory serves me right, they only were able to have a total of 26 uh, points then when they went down. This time out, they are currently leaders on the NSL, that's the National Super League, and they are brimming with confidence, saying that we are optimistic that they are going to go up. The other leaders now, we also have uh, the likes of uh, Vihiga United, uh, who are currently in the third uh, position, and the likes of Vushuru, who are also saying we want to party and be able to get those maximum points, and come next season, we want to dance against the big wigs. Bankers together with Vihiga, Ushuru and Wazito FC kept a cool nerve to stretch their fine form, winning their last weekend's fixtures. KCB are patching the summit of NSL with 67 points, brimming with confidence that they will be back to the Kenyan Premier League come next season. Uh, all the players of KCB are really, really working hard to make sure that uh, we go back to the top league. After their last outing, KCB secured a crucial 2-0 win against a dominant Bidco. 
Vega United, on the other hand, won against Talanta FC, a victory that sent Edward Manoa's coach side to the second position, having accumulated a total of 65 points. A result that gives Vega United belief that they will also join the Kenyan Premier League party if things go their way in the remaining fixtures. Uh, Lengwele to come a team ya Vega ni kupanda kucheza Kenyan Premier League next season. Ambapo tuna kabidi. Though tuna tumeteleza kidogo lakini tunasamba kuteleza si kuanguka. Tutaendelea kuweka bidii mpaka game ya mwisho. Kapo mbele we are still going bado tunaenda kufaulu na tunaenda bado ku KCB got the chop from the main league at the end of the 2015 season, where they finished 15th with only 26 points then, and their journey has not been an easy one in their promotional quest. It's not over until it's, uh, we are in the KPL, so let's keep on focusing until the, the, last, the last game. The promotion race to the Kenyan Premier League by the National Super League clubs promises to go to the very end, and after round 30 of action, the tie promises to have a sweet ending and maybe a dramatic one. Moses Wahisi, Kenyan Sports. Yes, it is the battle for the National Super League there, and it has intensified because uh, currently KCB have uh, 67 points on the summit of that log. And when you talk about them being on the summit of, the, of that log, the Jessing Park is uh, Ushuru because for Ushuru, they have been able to bag a maximum of 66 points so far. So this uh, uh, chess who is going to be promoted, uh, just expect it actually to go down to the wire. And also talk about Vega United, their tactician has been a very, very confident man because he's saying that I'm also optimistic that come next season uh, we'll also get that uh, promotion. Wazito is uh, currently on uh, the uh, fourth uh, place. They have 62 points. Nairobi Stima actually uh, winds up the best five teams in the National Super League so far. Uh, for them, they have been able to back a maximum of 58 points. But when you also look at the relegation scale on the other side, administration police on the 17th position, agrochemical on the 19th, and also Mosca are the worst performing side in the National Super League because they are down, having only 15 points out of the 29 matches that they have played so far. So for obvious reason, you know in National Super League, expect Agrochemical and the Administration Police plus St. Joseph to have a very, very tight competition while Moscow down there has already been relegated because they can't do some catching. Now, when we talk about matters uh, to do with rugby and also nurturing talent, it is always very, very important to make sure that you start that at a tender age. When you talk about uh, starting that at, at a tender age, Tattoo City, together with uh, Shamas Rugby, are trying to do that because for them, they are saying, let us nurture this talent. And they have a young league. They are training uh, uh, students at the Tattoo uh, Primary School. And for them, they are saying, we will do this for the long term. And we believe that out of this out of what we're doing, and that is nurturing and also curbing young talent, we might have some youngsters in future that will be dancing and also representing the Kenyan National 7s and maybe the Kenyan National 15s team. Take a look. Five months after Tattoo City announced its sponsorship for Shama's Rugby Foundation to set up a youth rugby clinic at Tattoo Primary School, it is all systems go with different parties involved yearning to nurture raw young rugby talent at the grassroots level. Not the best playing field, however, but the young children attending Tattoo Primary School are getting the basics of the game, something that remains a key foundation for the promising future kings and queens of rugby. One day I would like to represent Kenya, but many people in Kenya, they say rugby it is a rough game. They can't play because they are going to injure them, themselves. But if you have confidence in you, you can make it. You can play rugby and join Kenya team. Uh, I can tell the, uh, the parents to, to allow their children to come to play rugby because rugby can help someone to develop a skill or even help her or his on, on her education. We have a team that So now we to compete now. We have a team that we have to a national team. We have a team that we have to a national team. With the aid of the Shamir Rugby Foundation coaches, the players get the three training sessions per week and has now attracted over 100 young players.
As part of the clinic, the children taking part in the project spice the rugby action. With life skills training and as much as they want to develop their game, they know the importance of their studies. It's something that we are not just doing because there's a CSR clause somewhere. It is something we are actually investing in personally that we have an emotional connection to and we really like to see these kids succeed in life because most of them are from disadvantaged uh, communities. So we are trying to uplift them all through with the rugby program, we have the cricket program and we also have the lunch program that has brought the enrollment up. And when you look at the mean score of the school even within the area, the exam performance has gone up just because of the kind of support we are giving. For these kids, uh, uh, I, be, the basic part of rugby is what is even experienced at the, at the bigger stage. You find that uh, if you see at Kenyan rugby, we don't have the basic part. That's why even to our national team, we have a bit issues. But now with Shamas Rugby Foundation, I'm so glad that to say that in the next five years, we'll have players who can do basics at the better stage, at the bigger, uh, at the national level. You develop your, the character of your child, and uh, no matter if it is football, basketball, volleyball, of course, I chose rugby since I was 10 years old. I mean, over 20 years I've been playing this sport, and now I can see how much talent there is uh, in these children and how much fun they get out of that. Parents sometimes ask themselves, why should I force my daughter or my son to play rugby when it's a contact sport? The great thing is that there are so many variables of the sport that allow you to introduce somebody without uh, taking away that contact part but allowing children, especially in the age of between 6 and 12, 13, to be exposed to the fun side of the game. The development and the contact side become an important thing later on in the development of the, of the player but uh, definitely I think it's the best sport to build character because rugby built character because in the end uh, that's the nature of the sport and the level of enjoyment for the children is very high. It is a rugby journey that has started in a small way, but their vision is clearly not implausible. Well, I started playing rugby when I was 19, and for them they started when they were 11, 12, and the things they are grasping are things that I was struggling to grasp when I was 19, 20. So I think for them, they're really doing so well, and by the time they hit 16, 17, 18, I expect their rugby to be very advanced. Compared, they'd probably be playing with girls who are playing about, uh, over 18 now. Because if they keep mastering the skill and they keep perfecting everything they're doing, the passing, the drill, their fitness, they should be way better compared to what we have now in our under over, over 18 teams. Because for them, they've started at a very young age. And whatever things they're doing, they're doing it they're doing it much, much better, and their grasping is, is faster. I think you're grasping things much better when, when you're younger compared to when you're old. Our ultimate goal is to bring up balanced individuals. But also, as a result of uh, the program, we expect that one or two of them will be international class players who can go on and become professional rugby players in the future and represent the country and even just make a living out of it. We are trying to expose them to tournaments, not only Shamas tournaments, but also outside with the schools or other clubs. This year, 2017, was the year that we exposed children to most team matches and tournaments in Nakuru, in Nairobi. And what we and for the older boys, actually, and the older girls, we already have have enough exposure because our girls they've been playing with uh, Kenya uh, in the Kenyan league for now two years and the big news is that now in November we're starting with a nationwide team for the boys so all those who are finishing form four or are in form three or have already cleared school will be able to get exposure by playing in a league such as nationwide under the Shama Scholars and we are very very excited about that. In the upcoming months the clinics will involve other schools in the Tatu city area aiming to build and sustain a league. When we talk about the future of Kenyan and national rugby teams, we always start by curbing and also nurturing that talent. And with that, it is always key to make sure that the talent is curbed at a tender age. Moses Wakisi, Kenyan Sports.
Yes, it is always key to match and also cap young talent, and uh, that is exactly what Tato City together with Shaman Rugby are doing. We want to see actually more partnership in sorts and also more partnership, just making sure that the young talent, be it rugby, be it basketball, be it volleyball, all sports are matched at a tender age. And it is at this time that we take a short break. When we come back, we're also going to talk about the legend of the day, and also we're going to take a look at what is expected in today's action in matters to do with English Premier League. That and much more after this short break.